In this video, I'm gonna teach you my reverse cutout technique. And why am I going like this? <laughs> Hi, it's Carolyn. I'm a professional cake decorator, and on this channel, I share my tips and tricks and ways that I bake and decorate cakes to help you along your journey. So if you'd like to join me, hit the subscribe button and the bell so you can get notified whenever I release a new video. This week, I am doing my reverse cutout technique. And I, I don't know if I invented it. I mean, I've been doing it for years. I'm sure it's been done before. I can't be the, the person who came up with it. However, I haven't seen it anywhere else, but usually when you cut letters out of names, you cut the letter, right? This time we're, we're not keeping the letter. We're keeping the whole um, background and losing the letter. It sounds confusing. I'll show you a picture here of what I'm talking about and it looks super cool and i've done it quite a few times on my cakes so um let me stop rambling and just a reminder my birthday cake design blueprint is it listed in the description well a link for it is all right let's get into the video okay so i have my cake this is just covered in black marshmallow fondant um you could do this on buttercream cake as well and i just want to me measure the circumference and uh, see how long this needs to be so it needs to be at least 18 and a half inches long and I don't want it to be, I don't want the band to be the entire height of the cake. And this cake is four and three quarter inches high. So I think I'm going to do the band about three inches to three and three and a quarter inches high. So 18 and a half inches by three and a quarter inches high. All right, I have some gold marshmallow fondant. I just added a little gold coloring. This label looks disgusting, but it's just been used. I do clean it. <laughs> it just looks gross, but I can find something similar and link it below. I just added a little bit to get it to this light gold color because I'm going to paint it gold. This fondant is mixed with Tylos powder. I, if you've seen my videos, you know the Tylos powder is going to help the fondant dry or set up pretty hard, and it's going to be a lot easier to handle. You must have Tylos powder mixed in with your fondant to do this, or you have to use gum paste. If your fondant is too soft, it's going to drag. You're going to be so annoyed <laughs> and it's, it's just not going to work. So look, this fondant, it's holding its shape. You know, it's kind of stretchy. It, when I cut something out of it, it's going to hold its shape. So I pop this in the microwave for about 15 seconds to make it pliable and I want to roll it out at least 18 and a half inches long by three and a quarter inches high. Getting some cornstarch down here. This is cornstarch, not powdered sugar. Powdered sugar will make everything sticky. And just trying this, trying to roll this out long and a little tall. So I can measure this. It is at least 18 and a half long and it is four inches tall, so this is perfect. Now I'm gonna show you this if you don't have a ribbon cutter. My ribbon cutter that I have, it's not gonna be wide enough, so I'm gonna do this with rulers. This is a yardstick that I cut in half, so I have two rulers, I work with these all the time. So what I'm gonna do, just cut a strip, a straight line on the bottom. And then I'm gonna take the ruler and just straighten that edge. To get this the height that I want, I'm going to go 3.25 inches and I'm gonna put that line down here at the very bottom edge. And where the top edge is, I'm just gonna take my pizza cutter and make a little mark. And I'm gonna do that the whole way up and down here. So I can kind of make a dotted line that I'm gonna connect. And now carefully taking my, I can eyeball this, but if you don't want to eyeball it, what you can do, line up the ruler so it connects all of the lines and then just make your cut that way. But I'm just going to eyeball it. <laughs> and now I'm going to take both rulers on either side and just run them up and down. And I'm going to just, I'm just straightening the lines or it's just straightening the edges making sure that this is completely straight. All right, for some reason, my microphone decided to not work at this part. So what I'm doing is I'm measuring the height of the band and I'm taking a mental note of how tall the font can be. 
So I believe that this ended up being three inches tall or something like that. So I don't want the font to be taller than the band. So you want to have enough room at the top and the bottom where there's no font and just have the font in the middle. So if you have a three inch tall band, you would maybe want the font to be two inches, just for example. So this is longer than I need it to be, and that's actually good. Um, that way you don't have to be exactly precise with where you place the name. So this whole thing is about 25 and a half inches long. So to get the midpoint, I'm gonna go What's half of 25 and a half? 12.75. 12.75 is the middle. So I'm just going to measure it from the end to get to the middle. 12.75 is right here. And just to make a little mark so I know where that is. Tiny, really light mark in here that you're not even going to be able to see. The middle of Debbie. Debbie is five and a half inches long. So the middle of Debbie is 2.75. Is that right? Yes. <laughs> so right here, this part of the B, the middle part of the first B is the middle. So that's where I want to line it up in here. All right now I have my cutting board and to do this, I need an X-Acto knife and a Dresden tool. And in the corner here, I have a wet paper towel so I can keep wiping my knife off of it because the fondant is going to start sticking to it as um, I'm cutting this out. And side note, you can't make fun of my nails. They are ratchet right now. <laughs> I'm getting them done tomorrow, so whatever. All right, so I have my middle point marked in the fondant here, and I want to line this up doesn't have to be exact, but I want Debbie to be, you have to make sure that it is center on the band, right? So if I put it too far up here, it's not, it's actually probably better if I cut this. All right, much easier if you trim the excess paper off so you can see where, if it's center or not. So lining the middle of the, the first B up with this little mark that I made, so it's in the center. And it looks like there's about the same space from the top to the bottom. If you want to be exact, you can take a ruler and measure That's one inch. Almost and so this could come up just a little bit more. Now this has to stay in place. I have to hold this down with one hand. Um, I hope I don't block the view. So usually when we're cutting out letters, we're going to trace the outline right? And then trace the inside and then you cut the letter out. When we're doing it reverse, you are pushing down on the black part, the whole outline and then the whole inside. So we're going to remove this whole black part and keep the white part. Okay. This might make more sense as we go along. So when I'm tracing, what I'm doing, this Dresden tool, it's my favorite tool. I can link, I could try to find this one and link it. If there are other ones, I could link similar ones. I like because it has like a pointier end, a flatter end, and it curves up. It's just a lot easier to trace when you are tracing. First of all, if you don't have Tylos powder in your fondant, this is not going to work. I know I said that, but this fondant is stiff. It's holding its shape. Second of all, you have to find the perfect pressure. What we're going to do is we're tracing the fondant we're tracing the the letters onto the fondant you don't want to press too hard and poke holes in the fondant so you have to press hard enough where you're transferring the line but not too hard where you're poking a hole in the fondant so what i'm doing if you can see i'm staying on the black part i'm doing the whole outline right and then i'm going to stay on the black part and then trace the inside part the inside of the D, right? Keep your hand down, peel it up. Make sure you can see that it transferred and it did. I could actually do this a little bit harder so I could see the line a little bit better. And doing the same thing. So staying on the black part and tracing the inner piece and then the outside. I'm not going on the outside of the black, I'm staying on the black.
hold it down. Do not just lift it off. Hold it down and peel it back. That way you can put it right back down and start tracing again if there's any parts that you can see that didn't trace. Because if you just lift it up and then you're like, oh crap, and, and I didn't trace that part, it's so hard to put it back down to find, oh my gosh, and I just did it. <laughs> this part of the E isn't traced. Oh my gosh, I'm the worst. So now I gotta freaking figure that out on my own. Hold on a second. See, that's why you don't lift it up because I didn't trace this bottom part and coming down here. So now I just have to do it myself. All right, the reason I tell you to do these things is because I've done them so many times and it, it, I've annoyed myself so many times, I don't want you to make the same mistake. So I'm gonna have to get, I hate when I have to get close and it focuses on my head. Um, but just cutting out, following the lines that you made because we are keeping these center pieces. Usually we don't care about the center pieces, but this time, because we're doing it in reverse, we're keeping the center pieces. So you want to make them as neat as possible. I'm gonna keep that in there while I cut the rest of the letter out. I like to keep the name for reference so I can see like the D extends past here a little bit. I can still see it in the fondant, but it's just easier if I also look at the picture. All right, I don't wanna remove anything um, until I am finished because I don't want to compromise the structure of this ribbon. If I keep, if I start taking pieces out, uh, things may shift and it might get a little more difficult to cut. So I'm going to make all the cuts first and then smooth everything. Trying to keep everything in place. And for the little dot in the eye, I'm just going to use, looks like this number nine tip is perfect. So I'm just gonna cut that out. So now what I wanna do is remove all the letters and the center pieces. Keep the center pieces and we're gonna put the letters aside. Since we're removing the center pieces, you want to just smooth it out with your fingers so everything is nice and pretty and not jagged and ugly. And again, we're keeping all these pieces here, so you want to make sure that everything here looks nice and pretty as well. All right, now we, I smoothed out the center pieces. I wanna just take my tool and smooth out the inside piece here. So I don't know if you can see, but like right here in this B, there's a piece of fondant sticking out from the cut. So I just am trying to go through and remove any pieces, or you could take a tool and just press the fondant back on itself. This fondant is pretty uh, stiff, so it's holding its shape so I can lift it up a little bit, but just trying to smooth out all the cuts. Perfect, now I want to paint it gold. I have this Rollcom Super Gold here, and I can link, I get it at sugardelights.com, I can link it below, and I just have a little plate here, and it comes out fast, so I try to get it <laughs> pretty close to the edge, and just tap the side and get a little bit of the powder out. Then I have lemon extract. You can also use a high proof alcohol like Everclear. The alcohol will evaporate. There will be no alcohol in the piece. 
but lemon extract dries super quick, so does Everclear. And I'm just gonna pour that on here and make a paste. And I say, every time I say it, like Ross, make a pair of paste pants. Um, if anyone ever saw the leather pants episode of Friends. <laughs> and now I'm gonna paint the whole thing. And I'll probably need two coats. If you find that this is a little thick right now, so I'm gonna add a little more uh, uh, extract to it. And if it's too thin, just let it sit for a minute or two and the alcohol will evaporate and it'll be easier to paint. Now this is longer than I need it to be, so I'm not gonna paint all the way to the edges because I'm gonna be cutting that off. Also very important, you wanna make sure that you paint the bottom border and the top the top part. I think I might put a border on this, so that might not be necessary, but still you just wanna make sure that you get all that covered. And then same thing for the inside of the letters, making sure that all of this whole part is painted gold as well. So I'm just moving my brush to every angle because I can see like the inside of this eye isn't done. So you gotta mo move yourself around and look and see what's covered and what's not. So this is gonna need a second coat because I can see the, the brush stroke. So I'm gonna let that dry and I'm gonna do the center pieces. And same thing for the center pieces, you're gonna to wanna to make sure that you got you get not only the top, but all the sides too. I find that sometimes giving it a little tappy, tap, tap, tap like Happy Gilmore. Um, I say the same things in my video, <laughs> but give it a little tappy. Um, that helps um, put the color on, so whatever. And then this is already dry to the touch so I can put on another coat of the gold. Let that dry and then I'm going to put it on the cake. I am all over the place today, so excuse my background, but just real quick with this clay gun, I'm making a border. I um, got a little bit of Crisco on my finger and wiped it on the inside. I popped this fondant in the microwave so it's warm and pliable. Roll it into a little log and fill fill it and then I have a little disc here with a small hole on the end screw it on squeeze it I'm going to push down here and squeeze the handle to get this um, border out and after I do that I just like to roll it back and forth um, because sometimes you could see some imperfections in the line after you roll it out or squeeze it out. I'm sorry that you could see all my protein powder and everything in the background, but I'm grabbing this and I'm gonna flip it over. And now I'm taking some shortening. Shortening is very forgiving. You can move it around once it's on the cake. It's not gonna adhere to the cake like water or piping gel. And I'm gonna just paint shortening on the entire back of this, making sure that I get from the top to the bottom and I don't want any shortening sticking out where um, the holes for the letters are. So just be careful as you're painting around there. But you do want to get shortening in between the letters, right? Just uh, as much uh, everywhere that you can get it, right? So this way it's going to stick to the cake. have my cake here. This is just out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid. I just made a video on how I do this buttercream stencil and that will be linked below. So first I want to put one of these little um, pink pieces around the bottom. I'm getting a little bit of piping gel on a paintbrush. I'm going to start in the back. So I'm just getting a little bit of piping gel around the bottom so I can get this pink piece to stick to the cake. So I cut one end off of this. I'm gonna start at the back, put it down, and just turn the board. Where it meets in the back, just cut, and push it together. And then I like to just run my finger around it one more time for good measure. Usually I might have to trim it again. Uh, maybe not. Now I want to put the name on. You have to have your X-Acto knife handy because we're going to have to cut this. 
And now I'm gonna start from the front. Where's the front of my cake? If this is the back, this is the front, and I have this um, pattern right here in the front. So I'm gonna grab this. This is why it's important that your fondant is stiff. Center the name and wrap it around the cake. And we can get it into place after we put it on. There's gonna be a lot of excess. So where it meets in the back, just take your X-Acto knife and cut down the middle through both pieces. You don't wanna cut that pink piece at the bottom. Peel this back and then just remove this piece underneath. And now I could press it together and it'll meet right at the back. Okay, now I gotta get this into position. This is why I used uh, Crisco on the back. So I wanna make sure I'm getting low. There's a, I can see a little bit of black between the gold and the pink down here. So I'm just gonna take my thumb and push it down. Make sure that you could, the gold is touching that pink uh, border that I put on just earlier. Okay, the cut is a little off. I'm gonna use scissors this time. I just have to cut a tiny, tiny bit of that end off. Now we got the whole bottom part taken care of. I want to make sure that the top part is even because it's not. So getting my palette knife, I'm gonna get low with the cake and I'm just gonna take this end and start pushing it down and making sure that it looks to be even straight across. Like right here, it's starting to stick up a little bit and start to push that back down. These parts in here, you can just move the letters into the right place so I can use. You ever get to the point when you're cake decorating and there's just stuff everywhere? Like if you could, I'm trying to keep my kitchen clean for the background, but however, I need to just take a minute and clean everything up because my tools are all, are all over the place. But I'm gonna use my Dresden tool and just get everything in position. Any extra gold that's on the letters, I just wanna wipe off just so it, it's, it looks like um, little gold crumbs, which I tried to remove before I put it on the cake, but there's still a little bit sticking out, not a big deal. So I'm just pushing the fondant into the correct spot and trying to remove any um, ugly edges, any gold dust, any, you know, if you're not painting it gold, you're not gonna have to worry about that, obviously, but. So I have this Everclear vodka or whatever it is. I don't know, I don't drink, I don't know what it is. <laughs> Get a little bit in the cap and wet a paintbrush and then I can go through and any of the gold that's sticking on the black that I don't want there, I can just wipe it off, wipe that on a paper towel. So just cleaning up the piece and the alcohol will evaporate and it won't be all wet on the inside. All right, I wanna put the top part on, the top pink band. So same thing, getting a little bit of piping gel. Now this time I really have to be careful with the placement of the piping gel because I don't want it sticking out so I have this paintbrush and I'm just getting a tiny, tiny bit on here, just enough to make it stick. Like there's hardly any on here. And I'm really just painting the top of this gold piece and it's going to stick to that. And same thing, I cut the end off so it was straight. Start where the seam is in the back and just put it on the top. Cutting it where it meets in the back. And again, going over it one more time for good measure with my finger, making sure it's pressed against the cake and um, down onto the gold part. And I just wanna take my palette knife and press this down, making sure that it's even the whole way. For the final touch we have to put the center of the letters on so for this i'm going to use piping gel because i want them to stay in place don't need too much just a little bit on the back to make it stick 
and then you have to get the even border. So now that it's on here, I just want to take my tools like see here, you see there's not enough room. So I need to move the stuff, move the pieces into place. And here is your reverse cut name on your cake up. This is not finished. I'm going to put this back in the refrigerator until I am ready to put the final touches on it. So there you go. Here is the cake completely finished, but how cool is this technique? It just looks so cool. I don't know. Um, cool is just the word that I'm coming up with to describe it, <laughs> but I think it looks so neat. It's just a little different. And, um, wait, my biceps are shaking. Why do I feel like I have to hold the cake much better? I, I could actually just put a picture of the cake and talk about it that way. I don't know why I feel like I have to hold it. Maybe I'll start doing that instead. <laughs> However, um, okay. So we saw how to do the name and on this cake, I think I'm going to be posting, I filmed, uh, how to do the stencil and I'll probably post that before I post this. So look in the description below for the link on how I did the buttercream stencil. I have a video on how I make this big bow on how I make the curlies. I have video on how I make the topper and how I make the edible marker, uh, banner. So pretty much you could basically make this whole cake, um, except I don't have videos on how I do the stripe and I did a little bit of ganache on the top of the bottom tier and I painted it gold. But yeah, if you wanna see other techniques that are on this cake, I will link all of those videos in the description below. And again, I don't know if I say this enough, but I can't thank you guys enough for how amazing you are. That sounds so trite, doesn't it? Like you're amazing, but you really are. I'm just learning so much from you guys. I appreciate your feedback. I'm trying to start to do videos that you guys are asking me to do as well. So if you have any ideas for other videos, you can always leave them in the description, not in the description, in the comments, or, you know, ask me to make videos. And as I am making cakes with those decorations on it or whatever technique that you want to learn, I will film it. So I think that is it. If you guys have any other questions or comments, leave them below and you can follow me on my socials. And I have my website. Everything will be listed in the description as well. And if you want to stick around and watch more of me <laughs> and learn more about cakes, you can watch these two videos next. Why do I go? <laughs> you can watch these videos next and hit the subscribe button and the bell if you haven't already. Please like this video if you liked it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you guys. And remember, it's cake. Have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.